when you are conscious of God's grace, it keeps you from doing anything that will bring disgrace. Because it takes the grace of God to say no to where you need to say no and to say yes for what you need to say yes. It takes the grace of God to look at situation that looks so bleak and yet you say there is a way. Stop trying to love from your own account. Because in your own love account, there is no love. Nobody have what it takes to love outside of God's love. That's why you will see men who try to love out of self-love, they only go just a little bit and afterwards they are tired. Stop living as if you sent yourself to this earth. Not my papa, not my mama sent me to this earth. They may have done what husband and wife did and I came through then. How many of you know, even if husband and wife do what they do, if God doesn't sanction, there's no baby. God sanctioned your coming because he sent you. There is strength. Say there is strength in communion with God. Open your Bible with me to Second Corinthians chapter 13. And we'll look at verse 10. Sorry, verse 11 to verse 14. Shall we all read together? One, two, three, go. Finally, brethren, farewell. Become complete. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. You and I need to know that it takes the strength we draw from God. To go forward. And we need an ongoing drawing. From the strength that he provides. Uh, this 
Friday into Saturday early morning, we were here all praying and uh, worshiping. And the choir sang a song that actually propelled me in a in direction which I didn't plan for. And we focus on the strength of God. See the strength of God. And the book of Psalm 29, the last verse, it says, God will give strength to his people and he will bless his people with peace. If there's ever a time we need to know how to draw from the strength of God, it is now. I pray in Jesus' name, no weakling devil will weaken you. Someone shall strength of God. When you look through the epistles, most of all the letters that Apostle Paul wrote to the churches in epistle, Ephesians, uh, Colossians, uh, uh, Philippians, uh, the Thessalonians, uh, all of those churches, you will see every time Apostle Paul ended those epistles, you will see, I mean, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be with you. Check your Bible. Even when he wrote to his spiritual son, um, Timothy, you will end all those writings. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That's also likened to the communion of God be with you. Just like you will write letter and after you finish your, 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 your letter, you will say, yours sincerely. Aren't you glad every time God writes to you, he's saying to you, may my grace and my communion be with you. In all areas of your life, nothing will cut you from communion with God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I put here that the communion meal or Passover in the Old Testament was for the Israelites' forward movement in Egypt. After many years of being in slavery, the people of God, God wanted to take them out. And after many plagues that were released in Egypt, God asked them to get ready. On your way out, have a communion with me. And it was that communion they have in the name, in the, in the called Passover, that broke the camel's back. Pharaoh could not keep them one more day. As a matter of fact, he told them, you can go after the Passover. I pray in Jesus that everything or anything that may have held you back in this past months or past years of your life, in this month, may you press forward in the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at what God said to them in Exodus chapter 12. In Exodus 12. In preparation for their leaving Egypt, God spoke to them in chapter 12 of Exodus from verse 1 to verse 7. Exodus chapter 12 from verse 1 to verse 7. Let's all read together. Go on. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of month. May that be your case. Go on. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Go on. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. That's five. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goat. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. And you know what happened. After they did this, by the following morning, in every house wherever the blood was not found, the firstborn died. Even the firstborn of the cattle died. The firstborn of Pharaoh died. But there was no death in the house of the Jews. After that Passover, the people of God were, said, were told to please go on time. To stay one more day is for extra days. They did not only go, but they left with substance. They left with favor. As a matter of fact, it's almost like see, God paid, God allowed them to be paid all the unpaid wages for the years of still slavery. There shall be a restoration. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we saw that in that context, the breaking of the bread during the communion can also be a meal of deliverance from the forces of evil. It can be. We, 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 we also saw in the book of Acts chapter 27 how Apostle Paul was in the ship with lots of people and the ship was almost going through shipwreck. And towards the end of that time while they were in the ship, while they were voyaging, Apostle Paul broke the bread. Look what happened in Exodus, sorry, Acts 27. Acts 27 verse 33 to verse 35. Acts of the Apostle 27 from verse 33. Go on. And as the day was about to dawn, Paul implored them all to take food, saying, Today is the 14th day. You have waited and continued without food and eaten nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take nourishment, for this is for your survival, since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. Uh -huh. He took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when they had broken it, he began to eat. Hallelujah. Go on. What happened when they took it? They were all encouraged and also took food for themselves. I pray that whatever areas you've been discouraged in the past months, in this, in this time of waiting, which as a matter of fact also tomorrow we start praying and fasting. This waiting shall be for your lifting. Amen. That in this new month, may you go forward. Amen. From sickness to health. Amen. From lack to abundance. Amen. From joblessness to gainful employment. Amen. From barrenness to fruitfulness. Amen. From confusion to clarity. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you believe that, say amen. amen. That is the mind of God for everyone in this house. That there will be a stepping forward. And it shall be because of the divine strength of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Someone say there is strength in communion. Look to your Bible, you will see. Men and women whom God called often face what look like challenges. And many times those challenges are designed by the devil to get them back. Because even the case of the Israelites... After they left Egypt, here they are going forward, but suddenly they were facing what looked like challenges, and they were telling Moses, I think it's better for us to go back. Because you, you can never take things for granted. That's why the Bible says, let him that think it stand, take it. Listen for what he's saying is that don't become complacent. There must be an urge inside you on an ongoing basis. I must go forward. In my knowledge of Christ, I must go forward in my prayer life. I must, go, I must go forward in my serving God. Because once we don't have that attitude, then we begin to more like trust in ourselves. And the Bible says, the curse is the man who trusts in man. We will not trust in ourselves, but we will trust in the strength of Jehovah. Elijah was a prophet of God, called by God, and yet he faced some unprecedented challenges. That made him begin to run, run for his life. Look with me, First King chapter nineteen. First King chapter nineteen, and see a great prophet that was used by God, but faced what looked like discouragement, until God infused him with strength to go forward. First King nineteen from verse one, go on, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. How he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me. And more also, if I do not make your life as life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Bathsheba which belonged to Judah and left his servants there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that 
he might die and say, it's enough. Now, Lord, take my life for I am no better than my father. Then as he lay down and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. Then he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Verse 7. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. This was the prophet who said to, the, to Ahab, By my word, there will be no rain. And there was no rain. Things were happening. But this great man came to a place he, he was running for his life. Why? Jezebel was told all that Elijah had done. And he sent a threatening word to him. And what was the word he sent to Elijah? He says, uh, verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Verse 3 then say, And when he saw that, not he heard that, he what? He saw. Jezebel spoke. Elijah saw what he spoke. It's amazing how what we hear can paint a picture. All Jezebel did was to speak. But Elijah saw that. What did Elijah see? He saw death. He saw discouragement. He began to run for his life. Sometimes some letters that come through our letter boxes can paint some pictures. That all we see is we see that. I pray this morning. Whatever letter you have received in the course of this year that have, that have painted picture of doom and gloom today under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I break their power yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Elijah saw that. And Elijah was running for his life. Look at that verse 8. Verse 8. So he arose and ate and drank and he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Oreb the mountain of what, what, what changed in his discouragement he communed with God he received what we can call a communion with God and he was able the one who was running for his life arose and ate and and drank. This morning, as you eat and drink, may you go in the strength of this communion. And he went in the strength of that food. There is a place to go in the strength of our communion with God. Every one of us, whether you are a preacher or whether you are the, or just a believer, we all go through those moments wherein we feel downcast. King David said, when my soul is overwhelmed, Lead me to the rock that's what higher than I. You are destined for the top. Amen. You will not die in the valley. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. From the man, the man who, 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 who was rising, who arose and ran for his life. He arose and he ate in the, of that food and he went in the strength of that food. I pray you will go in the strength of your communion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I put here. The strength to go forward in life is in our communion with the Trinity. Say communion with the Trinity. The Trinity, God the Father. Say God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Put that scripture for me. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. Go on. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You see, in one verse, reference is made to the Trinity. Say so the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ 
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Say the Trinity. You and I need that. I was blessed by the message uh, um, Pastor Tony Peters was sharing on, on Monday during our uh, wedding anniversary. And uh, some of the stuff he mentioned there really got my own attention. Because there's some things that goes on in your life that you yourself, you're not conscious of or other people can pick it up. It's true. I am always conscious of the grace of God. If I'm not conscious of anything, I walk in the consciousness of that grace. Because it takes the consciousness of God's grace in your life, not only to go forward, but also to be free from disgrace. Grace of God keeps you away from disgrace. When you are conscious of God's grace, it keeps you from doing anything that will bring disgrace. Because it takes the grace of God to say no to where you need to say no and to say yes for what you need to say yes. It takes the grace of God to look at a situation that looks so bleak and yet you say there is a way. This morning, I pray that may you commune with the Trinity. Amen. Say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not the grace of a man. It's the grace of who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Because grace is personified in Jesus Christ. The Bible says the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to man. When God's grace appeared to you, do you embrace God's grace or do you refuse God's grace? Open your two hands. Say, I embrace the grace of God in all areas of my life. And let me tell you, you cannot embrace God's grace and be disgraced. In this life, you will never be disgraced. You commune with that grace. It will never just be said that when you speak by the grace of God, it's just a cliche. No, you mean it from your heart. I don't know how it will happen. I don't know how we're going to go to this. But I believe that by the grace of God, we will achieve it. By God's grace, you will achieve what looks unachievable. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. Those are powerful tools that you need to maintain not only just communion, but to walk in strength. Say so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God. Those are powerful. The love of God. That is agape. It takes the love of God to love men. What does I say? Stop trying to love from your own account. Because in your own love account, there is no love. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 5. That the love of God is poured out. It shall have brought in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Nobody have what it takes to love outside of God's love. That's why you will see men who try to love out of self-love, they only go just a little bit and afterwards they are tired. I love you, I love you, I love you. It all depends from which account. Because that self-account, we just, we dry out quickly. But in God's love account there's no bankruptcy say it's poured out by the Holy Spirit the love of God the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God say the love of God you are conscious of that love those are the things that strengthens you when you are conscious of God's love even when it seems as though you are facing what looks like hatred from people, the love of God is powerful than men's hatred. Jesus, you love me too much, too much, too much excess love. It's only God that can love you too much and that love will be excess love. Men's love can become excess baggage. But God's love will be true excess love. Lift your hands. Say the love of God is poured out into my heart. 
The number three thing then I said, the communion of the Holy Spirit. Just look how powerful these three are in all in the Trinity. The communion of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 4, verse 31. Read everybody. In the meantime, go on. His disciples urged him saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Uh -huh. Therefore the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Someone shout hallelujah. Our going forward is evidenced by our willingness to do the will of God. In every situation we may find ourselves. Some of you are here this morning or those of you watching. You are struggling with doing the will of God. And it can cut across any area. In the choice you are making. In the things you are doing. And the things he asks you to do you are not doing. Jesus said to them, go on, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish him. Church in the board, do you know God sent you to this earth? How willing are you to do the will of him that sent you? Stop living as if you sent yourself to this earth. Not my papa, not my mama sent me to this earth. They may have done what husband and wife did and I came through them. But it, how many of you know, even if husband and wife do what they do, if God doesn't sanction, there's no baby. God sanctioned your coming because he sent you. And if he sent you, do his will. Because the time is short. Praise God. Thank you so much for joining me in today's telecast. I truly believe that God spoke to your heart and I pray that every word of God you've heard today will profit you and take you to greater heights of grace and glory in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you to find a Bible-believing church in your area and you, if you ever come to our area where we are uh, in London, Dartford, please feel free to visit us in one of our services. I trust that you will be blessed.